coming to you live from Geekly Studios in DeSoto, Texas. Coming to you live from Geekly Studios in DeSoto, Texas. King David Reeves and Mentor Connector Podcast present another mentor moment. Great day, great mentors, rise and shine. It's time to grind. We're bringing to you another great episode of the Geek Lease Esports Masterclass here in studios with proper COVID precautions. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course. First and foremost, we with the podcast is now COVID compatible, ladies and gentlemen. And we have yet another great special guest in a separate room because we're following the guidelines out here. Uh, but he's a legend in the community uh, because he came back. But he was a legend out there in nationally as well. And so I won't list off his resume. It'd take me all day if I were to. But I just wanted to bring on to the episode today none other than the one and only Derek Batty, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all clap it up. Give him a round of applause. Welcome Thank you. to the Thank show. You. Man. Thank you. Brother Reeves and Geek Leaks, brother Danny yes, Martin and his mom and the awesome staff that they have here, man. I'm thankful Absolutely. that you guys have taken the COVID-19 precautions and we're doing this thing live, remotely, safe for everybody. Everybody Absolutely. PPE and uh, we are following our county uh, COVID-19 precautions all Absolutely. the way up the line. And it's amazing to have this awesome facility here. Man, and Absolutely representing from different schools and different communities all coming together for this huge gaming uh, trend that's going on in our country globally right now. So I'm honored to be a part of that and to be here with King David Reeves, my yes, man. Yes, sir, son. Same here. Thank you here, for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. Pleasure, pleasure, man. I, I had to bring in somebody who was a, a, a heavy hitter in, in the community and somebody who actually is really out here doing the work, man. And uh, I know a lot of people already know you, but I want them to truly understand. Don't give away all your secrets, but I need them. I need them truly understand what all you have your hands in, man. Give them a, a brief idea of who you are, where you're from, and, and why you go so hard for the South Oak Cliff community, man. Well, David, first of all, giving all honors to God. That's just how we roll. Absolutely, uh, coming man. Coming to you as a community member, an active community member from our seven five two one six community here in Dallas. Absolutely, uh, and that's how we met, actually, right with Ibach, man. Ibach Church. Shout out, shout out Ibach, big man. Big shout out Ricky Rush and Ibach. And Absolutely. also, I got to give a big shout out to my friends over at Friendship West as well. So Absolutely, So we're connected man. through our faith-based partners. And again, um, it's a pleasure to be here, and I want to be very informative with our listeners out there because there's a lot of information that they may need, and I'm just thankful to be here as a representative and invited by you and this awesome organization just to represent. Pleasure, brother. Thank you for being here. And tell us a little bit about yourself, Bet. Or let hey. tell them. I know some things that surprise me, man. Hey, anybody that knows the Batie family, um, yeah. proud Singing Hills natives right here out of Dallas, South Oak Cliff High School. Yes, sir. Uh, rep represent my four Oak Cliff shirt, my, my boy Taylor Torn. Yeah, shout out hey, Taylor, man. So I got to represent. Uh, Grew up and was born and raised in Singing Hills, right there on Red Bird and Singing Hills. Went to R.L. Thornton Elementary, Sarah Zumwalt Middle School, the Dallas South Oak Cliff High School. Was fortunate so. and blessed to go to two state championships, which kind of started my right basketball here. career um, in sports and was able to go from South Oak Cliff High School in 92 to Temple University in Philadelphia to play for the great Hall of Fame, yeah. John Chaney. Uh, hey, man, hey, man, my pop's from Philly, man, so shout out was, to them, man. Shout out to be. Philly, all my people up North Philly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was fortunate enough after Absolutely. that to be blessed by God to touch professional sports and to leave Philadelphia and to play in so Seattle, you, play so in you, Boston. So you talking about professional, like NBA professional? Yeah, man. You, or or had, you go up. The Czechs <laughs> had NBA on them when they came. <laughs> I tell you go overseas, man. Hey, I played overseas in Europe for two years as well. Oh, and nice, again, nice. I was blessed. Like I said, I was a crash test dummy. That's what they call you. You ain't going to get 50, 70 million dollars. You're just blessed to be there. <laughs> Scout team. So it is a professional Facts. career. It paid the bills. It put us in a great position as a family. Uh, I'd be that's, remiss that's if awesome, I didn't man. mention my younger brother, Tony Batie, who's Shout a out, Texas man. Tech alum, um, number five overall draft pick, played over 15, 16 years in the league. 
Uh, we was fortunate enough to play together in Boston prior to my knee injury that ended my career. Yeah, I saw I, that, man. I saw it. Sorry <laughs> to hear about that, man. But it was a beautiful – I saw the uh, an interview y'all did back in the gap. I think it was 99. Yeah. And they were was, was showing how y'all were hanging together and doing kind of everything together and the, the beautiful relationship that you had. Um, even helping him while you you had your knee injury, you, it was like they, hey, you could have stayed in Seattle, you could have gone back to Dallas, or you could have came and spent time with your brother, man, and, and helped each other. The funny thing, he and I were very close uh, growing up together, single parent, raised by grandparents. You know, yeah, went man. through that battle, standing differently, <clears throat> projects throughout Dallas. So but you know the story of these kids. Know the story. I am the story, Dave. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's real. And that's so, what a lot of people know, mistake. We were, we were blessed to be in Boston for two and a half years together. He, um, he had got traded there from the Lakers during a lockout in 99. Rick Pitino, mm -hmm. who was the coach at the time, recruited me out of South Oak Cliff when he was at Providence College wow. University. So um, we had a relationship. Rick called me in and said he needs some guys with toughness. Everybody know my defensive aggressiveness <laughs> was my key to my oh, you success as a player. I was, yeah, like is that it. why? Is that why you still hemming people up like security, man? Hey, man, we when they when they when they when they, when they, to keep when they start these riots. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody start riots around Bat T, man, when they see him come through, hey, hey, y'all, chill out, chill out, chill out. No, we're, we're not <laughs> doing that here. No we got a bigger focus, so it's just yes, a pleasure sir. to have those experiences and then to be able to come back to our community and use those influences just to simply help our community, educate our community, work with our youth, especially that demographic that. People seem to look over intentionally, it appears, yeah. uh, to make sure they remember that you know, we, we have a lot of needs in our community and our leaders need a lot of support. So our state and federal and local governments, we're relying on them to come through. I, I use the term, we still waiting on the Calvary. Yeah. So until the Calvary come, guys like myself and Taylor Torrance and yourself and Danny Martin and Geeks, yeah. we're going to continue to really do We are the Calvary. Press toward the goal is what we're going to continue to do. So it's a pleasure yeah, man. again to be here. To, hey, to like you Calvary. told me, man, we, we are the Calvary, man. We are the Calvary. <laughs> so so we're going we gonna, to we gonna wait on them to step up until then. So we're going to let them know why they need to step up. And what we're going to do is educate our community so they can get involved and take the leadership for things they know they need in their community. Instead of having yes. someone making decisions for you, those should be reflective of the communities. Yeah, man. That's, that's exactly what's necessary. And so and so why do you feel like you've been put in a position to um to be that, that spokesperson? Because a lot of people go out and succeed, become successful in whatever city they they had that success, especially pro athletes, they kinda you since you bought your house there and you might have started your family there, you, you you stay planted where they relocate you to instead of taking time to come back home. Um, you see, I mean, you see some great athletes doing it, like your, your LeBron James, you know. Oh yeah. But at the but that's I don't, I don't feel like. I guess I see some summer camp. Uh, some some athletes come back here and there and do some summer camps, but to come back to your community that groomed you, that raised you, made you who you were, and to plug in the way you're plugging in to help move the community forward. I know you get the respect from a lot of not only SOC alumni, but alumni all over Dallas ISD, along with p respect from the political figures in the community. Uh, you, you, you're you actually an advisor to a lot of them, uh, That pe and people don't realize that. Uh, you actually have the ear of, I would say, everybody from the school board president to the mayor. So it's, it's like someone like yourself with the kind of clout you have uh, that we can't necessarily talk about all the connections you you have, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't we don't want to put it all the way out there because no, some we people don't put it all you, out there. yeah yeah we some people need to know need to not know that you're moving behind the scenes man. But well, I, I I tell people sometimes it's how you use your God given talent and how yeah. you use your influence. I'm, I'm very intentional about those with influence. Sometimes again, but what made the difference? What well, the difference you? is your yeah. Why did you choose? Okay. Your upbringing, so, uh, the people in your circle. I'll tell you, behind every successful person, there's a successful story behind their family. There was somebody yeah. who probably didn't get a check, <clears throat> didn't get on TV, that prepared that individual to be who they are. I take yes, pride sir. in creating the next group of leaders and scholars and superstars from our community because I know they're needed. One day Absolutely. I'll be moving on. 
And yeah, man. Guys like yourself, you young guys that are a little younger, <laughs> will be fully young, taking young. this city and this county. And we young whippersnappers. Sure they're truly representing our communities because we get underrepresented. We've been underrepresented for decades. And I think so, that being able to work with Justin Henry and Taylor Torrance. Yeah, yeah, shout Matt out to both Houston, of them, brother. good brothers. Byron Sanders. Yeah. Maxie Johnson. Yeah, all of them going to be on this podcast. Miguel Solis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jaime uh, Resendez. Dallas, Resi- you know, I think about all those folk who I've had an opportunity to work with in some capacity, and yep. that's just on a small scale because then you talk about the John Wally Prices and the yeah. Royce Wesses. Congresswoman know, Johnson, Eddie Bernice Johnson. Ourselves not to be like them, but to be better than them because that's what they've charged us with. Don't be like me, be better than me. And we just want to better our communities and represent the, the unrepresented and the misrepresented if I could. That's powerful, brother. And did that start with your your mom's upbringing? Because cause you saw what she was going through and how hard she worked for you and your brother. Because clearly she she got some kind of formula, right? You, yeah, I know you you have, what, two siblings, and well, two out of I, three of y'all went pro. And I think I told you this story. <laughs> that I didn't even think about this until a couple of weeks ago. The uh, head guy with the Elite News, a good friend of mine, um, Daryl Blair, son of yeah, yeah, yeah. great Joseph Blair, the Elite News. He say, right. but T to have, I think to make it to the NBA is still one in one million chance yeah, to, make it, to make it there. And then when he went that, he, chronolog- he, he chronolized how you made it for yeah. how long it was. And then your brother Tony made it. To right behind. And then to have a nephew that just finished at Baylor a couple of years ago with an opportunity, he said that in itself is a blessing. And then to have those individuals come back and be active in our community yeah. is a blessing as well. So I'm just thankful. And again, a, I never thought about that in 25 years until he what? broke it down that we did have two from our household that was able to go off and play professional sports, go to college, Division yeah. One college, playing NCAAs. And, you know. It's the, crazy, those, man, because what's, what's, what's the formula? That, that you would never consider coming from where we came from. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. What what is the formula, man? Because that's that. There's got to be some kind of recipe to cook that up. Because hey, that's some good that's home, that. some good home cooking. <laughs> some great rearing from grandparents. <laughs> and some good home beatings. <laughs> and a single mother. And a single mother that didn't play. That made sure we was yeah. at church every Sunday. Yes, made sir. Sure we was respectful to people. Made sure we took care of ourselves as far as our hygiene and That's good. Our vernaculars and how we talk to people. So again, it, it is upbringing, and in a culture, yes, a millennial culture, where sometimes that parent piece is missing, yeah, not there as it should. I think our mentors, like yourself, like myself, like Mr. Danny Morton and, and Geek Leaks, become the connection yeah. between how we mentor to these kids, and we also become parents. To him in some yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's like second line defense almost. Yes, sir. Definitely. So it's the, ca- the Calvary. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are the Calvary. <laughs> well, keep going. Keep going back to that because we have to be the Calvary, man. Yes, sir. And, and it's funny we're coming off of that. You know, after uh, uh, Easter weekend, Resurrection Sunday, man. Hey, that's, it, it that's was the real cap. Not, not being able to do the things that we've normally are used to as a country. Yeah. Like but I had this conversation with another friend of mine who's huge on data here in this city. And we've been through this before. If you remember back to Columbine, it changed the way we went to school. If you remember back to 9-11, it changed the way we traveled in our country. And now we're dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic. We're going to get through this, like my boy Deion Sanders said. We're going to be all right. (laughs) Prime time. But at the same time, there's a lot of things we have to do to ensure that we're able to return safely, in a timely fashion, we don't rush this. The testing is vitally important. Yes, like sir. Angela Morris over there, Parkland, who uh, gives yeah, me shout out. updates and helps us out. Sock alum, right? Yes. Uh, well, she's not a sock alum. She's Skyline, but she grew up in Singing Okay, Hills. okay. That's, that's it, love. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all grew up in Singing Hills together. So shout out. Singing Hills, but she had to do her thing. But, it, but, you know, she gives me this information. It just talks about, you know, how federal government just haven't given us enough tests. And I, t- I right. started using this term the other day, herbalizing the testing process. I want to see testing in Royal Crest, Southern Crest, Rosemont Apartments. I yes, want to see them Village 45 Oak. in Linfield. You know, yeah. I know they're at Ellis Davis. I know that at American Airlines, but I grew up in Singing Hills. I can't get to Ellis Davis. I can't I can't get over there if I yeah. can't walk. If I'm yeah, hit that's by a poverty, far it's just certain things that I just can't do. And that's I have real. families now talking about my son is sick. We don't know what he is. We don't have any insurance. These are real life things that we have to deal with in our community. 
Well, yeah, but and part of part of voice, I'm gonna make sure that we speak to that. Part of the issue is we have to deal with them in our communities, but not everybody has to deal with them in their communities. So, if you don't see the problem, you don't think there's a problem well, until start, so, until somebody comes, comes out with the trumpet. Now, now you bingo. Get equity yeah, now. man. I, I was trying. I was trying to transition to that equity piece, yeah, man. Now you get into equity all, when certain communities get certain things and others don't. That competition for goods through an equity lens. Because because equity as it relates to esports, I'll say falls under the competition piece because it's like a competition for your goods and your resources out here, right? Or and explain that more so because I I'm not the I'm not the political savvy guy. I, I just know enough to get by and know how important it is because politics is in everything. But explain the equity to the people real quick and how that how that relates because you I feel like you've been a uh, a trumpeteer for equity being brought to South Oak Cliff in the right way and the, the respect given to the community and the people in, that make up that community, I feel like you've been a major, uh, uh, or a drum major even, you know, a major trumpeteer for that to make sure it happened. But what what is the competition aspect in equity as you as you would define it? Well, when you start talking about competition and start talking about competition in regards to sports and things of that nature. Come yeah, to you know. It's just the the mere ask yourself how many African American or Latino owners do we have of professional sports teams? Mm. Oh wow! You look at the trend of coaches at the Division One level. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was like that in high school, and that trend turned like in the late '80s that it transitioned over to having more African American coaches and things of that nature. But equity means that all cultures and races and religions are represented properly and thoroughly. Yes, not sir. Just marginalized but they're properly represented that means if we get ten dollars in the pot and we're talking about being equitable that means certain communities may need five of those ten dollars <laughs> instead of That's just real. ten communities getting one dollar we may need to put five dollars here because they've been you know economically disadvantaged for decades yeah so i think about equity i think about how many new schools are the programs inside of schools? I think I think a lot of things. I'm, I'm glad to be able to speak as a citizen today, not an employee of any organization right. or the district, but as myself as a taxpayer and a voter. And those are my personal feelings about it. But I think we have to look at everything now. I, back in the day, they were talking about equality, and we're still yeah. fighting for equality. But now oh, we're yeah. fighting for equality and equity because they have to go hand in hand in order for us to lift these communities up that have been hit hard with gun violence, hit hard with poor public schools, hit hard with food deserts, no park. Okay, so 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 <laughs> bet who who would you say is is the person or persons that should determine who those communities are that are hit the hardest? Cuz I, I know you have on that nice 40 cliff hoodie and you have some zip <laughs> you have some zip codes on there, brother. Boy, and I, I don't I don't know if you are a great interviewer because if you segue <laughs> into that you always have leaders from community that have always been here. Yeah. You know, irregardless of what they may be doing now, pastors and people like Taylor Torrance, and I can speak yeah, yeah. passionately about what Foro Cliff is doing. Yes, sir. And the G And I second Rams, second that. How they're educating kids and Taylor works his behind off as a oh, yeah. board rep. Doesn't get paid for it. Advocating to make sure our green space And and I and I respect that brother so much because he advocates but he's never looking for the attention. He's he's never trying to be in front of the camera lens, even though he ends up on it sometime, you know. And, and it's usually for again, for big things. Like yeah, this. you got you got to <laughs> <laughs> you got to. But he doesn't do it for that reason, and so that's why I res respect Dr. most Crystal, about him. Dr. Jennifer, Michael yeah, yeah, over there, who's a former Sox student, he has a a great connection with our South Oak Cliff High School because you're only about a half or half a mile from the campus, a half a block from the campus. And yeah. Then, in order to find true equity and what goes on in communities, you need to get with people that are actually doing the work. You know, right. You have your elected officials and you have your pastors. Sometimes you have to get with those that are on the ground that, that are not looking but, for the cameras, that are not Bingo, bingo. Be on and, social media but see, but, doing the work, and they're going to give you a true portrayal of what absolutely. you need it, who needs to get the resources, and how it can help our communities. And I'm honored to be delegated by this community. I didn't delegate yeah. myself. That's real. By this community to help represent. Very true, and I see that, and I and I, and not only believe that I I've seen the people 
lean on you and and go to you for that and you stepped up to the challenge man and, and want to thank you for that and i know the whole community thanks you for that and i really don't think it's just south oak cliff because you're you're a pioneer and innovator in a lot of ways man and you lead that charge that when things get started and fires get ignited from south oak cliff you best you best believe you rest yourself assured that if Batty's leading the charge, it's about to be a ripple effect. It's about to be a domino effect all over the city. So people don't realize where it starts, but just know I want to make sure you got on here and got the your, your, your flowers before you're on the other side <laughs> of the grave, man, because because people don't give you enough uh, uh, props for what all you do for the community. And so mm -hmm. just thank you, brother, and uh, thank you for continuing to be a torchbearer out here for – these the underserved communities, man, that, that don't have a lot of advocates out here fighting like you are and, and need more, but they're not going to be motivated to come up out their comfort zones or they'll be too fearful if they don't continue to see brothers like yourself doing the work and making it possible. And so with that, like I, all that you, the great work you're doing, you need more support, right? You need more help to get more done. So how can someone plug in if they're trying to support you and the work you're doing in the community? Uh, but also, if they if if they can't physically support, especially now with COVID and all the uh, restrictions, regulations, mm -hmm. how could they offer help and resources or virtually support or donate? Like what? How can how can we support Derek Batty and all that is connected to him and the whole well, SOC community? And, and brother Reeves, David. First of all, I thank you because I've been volunteering with you. You've been there to help us at South Oak Cliff pass out meals the last two weeks um, to over 1,200 families. Uh, Shout out, We man. do that with it's been an honor. and grit, putting ourselves at risk to make sure that those that are in need get what they need. So don't Absolutely. help Derek Batty. Help yeah, the yeah. community. That's real. And I think the difference between some of our leaders and some of the older leaders is Sometimes when finances get involved, things get tricky. Yes, you sir. Have to be able to lead regardless of the finances. They did it back in the civil rights movement. It wasn't much money. It was just a group of passionate people that understood the mission that were yeah. willing to work together. And working together don't mean we're going to always agree. There'll be some people that don't agree with me being here. Right. And that's fine. But at the same time, what they won't do is challenge our passion. And not right. Our, and not I just me because it's a, a, a legion of South yeah. Alumni, a legion of leaders from our communities of color, my West Dallas people over there with George Castro and the Pinkston alumni and Wilma Hutchins over there with Span, the great Tony Johnson at Roosevelt. Um, yeah, over there with shout Stephen out Tony. Poole at Carter, my girl over there at Kimball. We represent a lot of great this ones. community alumni association because we know that most of the people in our community were blessed to go to those educational facilities. So yeah. What we try to do is say, don't don't give us anything. Give it to your communities. Everyone yep. has a community. Pick a five mile radius of each one of those schools I just named, and start a program. <clears throat> start a mentoring program. Go fund bow legs over there with them comets over there at the Salvation Army. Go over there with the Raiders. Find a and program that, that you can use your influence and your resources to help kids. That's the yes. key to this. Absolutely, and you got several mentoring programs. You start up. At South Oak Cliff, uh, I know for the the male leadership and for the female leadership, explain how you were able to do that and how you were able to pull in the community to support that. Like, how did you use your influence and resources? And the great thing about having a professional athlete experience, you have a lot of exposure. You meet a lot of allies. Bingo. And, and you can't be bought out. There you, you go. I and think that's, that's a, one of the unique that's a things big... that gives you credibility. They know that I'm not asking you for no money from me. If I ask you for right. something, it's going to go to an organization that's going to do the work. And I think if we had more yeah. leaders that did that more often, because we do have some great leaders. I think about Joyce Foreman, Justin Henry. Yeah, shout Kathy out to both of them. Johnson, Casey Thomas. And and Maxie. Tanel Atkins and yeah. Adam McGill. I think about a lot of those folks. They not only put their money where their mouth is, but they use their political influence to make sure resources go to the people that need it. Absolutely, That's what we need right now. And if I can, and we see, I see them out there in the community too. Right. Most importantly, they're not they're just planting saying trees it. Or cleaning up a park, yeah. or, or, or passing out essential supplies is what we're about to do Thursday. Um, these individuals are there, and it's more of them there. Some that I don't even notice out there doing the work. Yeah, uh, Miss Pemberton from CeeLo Ranch. 
who's been doing this work a long time, Mita Havlick. Uh, man, I, I'm just thinking of people that I recently served with on the Dallas uh, Task Force Against Violent Crime to make our community safer. Okay, and, that, and that's, that's the task force, the mayor's task force? Yeah, the put mayor together? assembled a task force <laughs> due to the peak in murders that we had in Dallas. I think it was one of the wow. highest in over 30 years this oh, past yeah. summer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that murder the mayhem. Highest, the highest zip code that the murders occurred in by the data. And if we stay tethered to the data, we shouldn't have any issues. The data says where the need is. It says what the resources that are needed. It tells you the demographic, all the issues going on. The data is there. All we got to do is fund it and get Absolutely. programs in that's going to really help it. So I'm honored to be a credible warrior for the cause. Absolutely, no matter what Absolutely call, brother. Education, clean water, whatever it is, I think it's important to our communities. Absolutely, brother. You mentioned two things, the importance of that data. <laughs> as, it, as it relates to the zip code, I just want you to get this in there real quick. That 75216, man, why, why, what is the, what does the data look like in that zip code? And then also mention the resources and how you leverage those resources to help the zip code. And honestly, I just referenced the D Magazine article that came out maybe about a year ago that talked about 75216 and I think yeah. the area in East Dallas over there by Samuel and Spruce. Oh yeah, they, Pleasant make, Grove. they make up a majority of the population of the prison systems in Texas, just out of those two zip codes. Yeah. Then we moved that data forward that showed 75216 had the highest amount of murders over this past summer. Man. Um, one of the highest teenage pregnancy rates. Um, some of the worst schools academically were traditionally. We've changed that in South Oak Cliff over the last five yeah. years. But traditionally, some of the poor schools we're in these zip codes and areas. And the district is yep. doing a great job now yep. making sure that they fund those schools and they put new campuses and update those buildings because that's vitally Absolutely. important in retention of students and, and, and neighbors here in our community. Yeah, absolutely. And, and shout out to uh, the judges, the Dallas County judges, uh, Pipeline Possibility. That's part of why they started Amber their mentoring Givens. program. Yes, sir. <laughs> Judge Amber Givens. Uh, Judge Lisa Green actually interviewed her on the Geek Leets Esports masterclass last week. Um, also, Judge Shakita Kelly and Judge Stephanie used to be Mitchell Stephanie Huff. She's married now to the Good Bros. Rue. Shout out! Uh, but they they started that and were going to different Dallas ISD schools with that mentoring program because of what they started up with Sai. So because yeah. of those very stats, that data you're you're listening about the zip code. So. And it's I've been exactly. honored to work with those individuals. Like I said, Absolutely. There, are, there, there are other officials out there doing this same work. And yeah. Again, we just got to make sure that we continue to grow the brand of grassroots leaders. That yes, ain't sir. Getting bought, ain't getting paid under the table. That are doing <laughs> the work and making sure the resources are going to the areas that the data already says it needs. Yes, sir. It's, it's it's, simple, it should be. It should be common sense. Ready. <laughs> it's, it's simple. It's simple, but it's not easy. That's the problem. Oh, that's it's not easy, easy because politics mm. plays in everything. You got to be able to get the votes and the support amongst the board. You got to have your leadership Bingo. involved. But the most part is your community has to advocate for what they want. Absolutely, that's the and key. Speak up for what you want, and if you're the only voice, speak louder. <laughs> yeah, right. man. Yeah. So you said, man. You saying you dropping a lot of jewels, man. I thank you for this. All right. You said two things right there. Don't forget. I, said, I, I got three things. Birth, so you know we come real now. <laughs> <laughs> come real. Come prepared. So I, I, I said two things, but I'm holding up three fingers because there's one. There's a, the grab and go as well. I want to get back to the sponsorship of your resources. So talk about that. But you just mentioned the school and. And the importance of the vote. So I know we talked about your role with GOTV, NAACP, uh, but also how did that play into, or did that play into SOC getting this newly renovated, you know, $65 million high school um, that you just, you just, uh, did the groundbreaking on back in January? January the 11th, yeah. We just did the ribbon cut and had over yeah, man. 1,800 community members and leaders. Oh, yeah. Like Eddie Bernice Johnson. Yeah, it was beautiful. Mayor, all of our district yep. officials. Dr. Hinojosa was there. Yep. Um, school, Justin Henry, thing. school board president. And I tell people the fight for SOC started well a long time before the protest. Yeah. And it was community leaders. Reverend Horace Bradshaw Sr., the president of the SOC Alumni Bear Cave, was talking about a new South Oak Cliff when I was playing Check. in Boston. 
he was talking about we need a new school. That was 1997, 98. Man. Um, President Bradshaw was talking about that. And, and to move that from 98 to 2020 yeah. to have a grand opening was, was emotional for him as a man and as a SOC alumni. And That's I powerful. think that the fight for SOC started years before the protest. It was people that understood it, that that pillar in our community needed to be taken care meant. of. And it had yeah. been our superintendent, um, the great uh, Dr. Hinojosa, may alluded to that in his state of the district. And yes, sir. We, we sure just did. do right. But we're making every amend to take care of that. And with the support of our community leaders that are out there urging them along, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> help help him with help him with a little foot guide. Don't don't ever forget that part. Sometimes you gotta kind of a little harder to to make sure now, that they just remember to now, follow the data and do the right thing. Now a lot of people in our community are afraid of that vote, man. Um, and or or they don't think it matters. Their vote matters. Their voice matters. Well, what? How you could? On, you what would you on, tell them? Some good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I don't think I man, don't cause, think cause come from you afraid of the vote I think that again decades of doing the same thing I think that's insanity yeah. when you do the same thing over and over again and expect get a different, the same but when different it result voting that's something that we can't back down on we have to represent and have our absolutely. voices represented at the polls absolutely that's the key because your elected officials are your advocates now again yeah. some of our elected officials I got to get on them sometimes because they don't always do right. Yeah. They mean well. They mean well. They want to do right. But even they have obstacles. Our right. elected officials, they get down there. Some of them are misrepresented. There ain't but and two so, or three of them. So and you need you, seven to get it approved. So uh, do you find it? Do you find it that they respect your voice more because they know you're a voting community member or you're vocal in the community? Like what? What 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 do you think it is that the elected officials give you a give you more of a voice? Because I, I feel like a lot of people will wonder how why their voice more matters or how they can make it matter more. Like, what do you feel like it is that you do that? I whether it's the you, vote or the David, vote. When you get into that political arena, it gets real tricky. I think I get the respect from those individuals because maybe there's some name notoriety there, but I think that there's a huge respect and credibility that the fact yeah. that. I'm not here for me personally. Bingo, bingo. I'm here representing these communities that the data has already told them about. And all Absolutely. I do is hold them accountable for any political promises they make, anything they say out of their mouth about helping the community. We just want to make sure that they do what they say. And yeah, let's be clear, real. we also give them the support and the yep. resources to be able to get the job done. That's vitally important, too. I say the same thing about our teachers. My wife is a teacher. And they need resources. And yes, if we sir. have community members advocating for those same resources and aligning with our city, aligning with our county, aligning with our public That's school up. district, now we can effectively help more kids. Yeah. And that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And, and this poverty and thing is supposed crazy. to be about. I, I never knew we had homeless teenagers. Yeah. And then a lot of them don't know that they're homeless because right. if they're cow right. surf if they're cow surfing, they think it's the norm. Like I'm with after my grandma read, this week, after my I uncle. Read what, hey, after I read what classifies you at homeless, I, I had to realize that me and my brother were homeless. <laughs> yeah, that's real. <laughs> but you yeah, don't call it that when it's ten of y'all in grandma's house and somebody gotta <laughs> sleep on the couch. That's called our culture. That's how we live. Yeah. We take care of each other. And yeah, I want to bring that same feeling back to our community where we begin to take care of each other. We start our own feeding programs. We start our own um, supportive things for our community because who better knows what our community needs than the people than who have grown up there and succe had success there and failures. Yes, sir. I tell you, I'm, and, I'm huge on failing forward. And came back, though. <laughs> but, can't, yeah, so, Will Smith talks about that. Always yeah, fail man, forward. I'm, I'm huge on failing forward, and we had a lot of that. But at the same time, I think our, our community is uniquely positioned. Um, positioned and connected at the hip with a lot of things that are going on globally in the world right now, in particular this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. Absolutely. And you mentioned bringing up your own food and resources, resource centers. And you have been very innovative in the sense of creating your own food pantry at SOC as well as a resource pantry at SOC. And I know you got some major contributors there. I know uh, with Education Freedom got to uh, help uh, 
put some some items together this past week. It was pretty awesome yeah, um, you'll, you'll with, with, with Friendship West. And what happens is as a result of okay. the number, the increased number of homeless students in DISD in particular, but all over the county. Yeah, um, I've been noticing that. started a campus pantry for certain schools, in particular your secondary schools. And these pantries pretty much just provide essential supplies. Whether it yes, be sir. Hy- hygiene products for your young ladies and young men, um, what we call quick grab-to-go foods, things they can take yeah, with yeah. them, whether it be the noodles or whether it be the cup oatmeal. Mm-hmm. Some good snacks. snacks. Crackers. What we call it, we just want to make sure they have something. When you hey, don't man, don't nothing, don't forget that popcorn, man. Anything. Don't forget that yeah, popcorn. Man, that popcorn. That man, boy. And you guys <laughs> have put together over 150 essential supply kits that will serve a family of four to five for at least a week. And whose idea was that? Well, to, to, I presented the idea elaborate. to our principal because we have this pantry and you have all these supplies in it, and it don't look like we're going to be going back. I don't know. I don't make that decision. But if this thing well, stretches to May, it's not going to be much you can get done. And school is yeah. normally out the 1st of June. Yes, so sir. you have these pantries and you have supplies that we use to service our transient students. And it's sitting there now. Yeah. And I had this idea like, Dr. Johnson, would you ask the district or approve if we can take this stuff and when we do the deliveries, also ask parents. And it's, it's, it's open if you want yep. it or not. They don't have to if they if want. If you need you know, the, the alumni's purchased toilet paper and paper towels to put in those things, those care packages that we made. And again, yeah, it's just our way of saying we care about, we care and understand the importance of wraparound services for our kids. Absolutely. It's, you know? it's beyond just teaching A's and B's and one, two, threes. There's a whole bunch of circumstances in their communities that yeah. you don't see when they come to school, but they affect their learning. And if right. we can start it's- affecting those in a positive way, we can create better outcomes for our public school children Bingo. in this county. Bingo. And a lot of people are missing that essential point because yes. this was uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Like if, if, <laughs> I, if, right. I if I ain't got my food, if I ain't got food, water, or clothes, I can't take a bath, brush my teeth in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, and Ms. Johnson, unfortunately, you, I respect you, but I don't hear nothing you're talking about because I ain't ate or had a shower in two or three days. Bingo. And I'm, I'm, I'm caring about how I subconsciously feel about myself. Bingo. And now they're calling me to act out, and people miss it. And, and you, and you, you surprise kid. You suspend the kid, and really there was something that we could have fixed if we just would have sent him home with a package of some food for him and his family. So Bingo. That that's my passion, Simple. really. It's because yeah, my and I see it, man. We and I come from that. And your passion is contagious, brother. So I, I really appreciate you for that, man. Because everybody around you <laughs> is it, it. They they can't help but be. Ignited by your passion, man. It's like you can't just hang around Batty and be complacent. Like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, that somebody else to do. It's like, nah. If Batty's in the room in the building, yeah, it's, it's getting done. And and it, even if it ain't him, you gonna you gonna be motivated by the fact that he's in the building. Hey, and so. I tell folks with great power comes great responsibility. Yes, sir. And I think that what God blessed me and my family to experience coming from. The projects we came from, the hood we came from, I, I don't have a choice but to give it back. Yeah. I have to give it back That's real. the way it was given to me. Yes, and sir. And so I'm not going to half butt that, for lack of better terms. I'm going to make sure that it's done right. I tell folk, don't look at me and think I'm trying to outshine somebody. Just come out and outwork me. Doing yeah. The things that we do. Yeah. Just come and out that's and that, that's the it. people at Four Oak Cliff. Come out and outwork our district trustees and our, our district yeah. leaders that are really, really, really trying to get our yeah. public school thing going the right direction. So just got a lot of out workers. Don't out- That's that competition. Don't it's out all post com- us. Don't outshine <laughs> us. Come out and out workers. <laughs> yeah. And that's that friendly competition. That's the competitive spirit that we need, man. Yes, sir. And, that, and that's what this Geek Lease Esports Masterclass is all about, uh, highlighting just that the importance of competition, man, because we it, the more competition we have in our communities for positive elements like this, the less we'll have the negative and the violent elements of competition because it's, it, it can get ugly, and and there's always a, a, a ugly side where the, where the pretty is. But hey. we got to we got to we got to be prepared for the good, bad, and the ugly. The more we focus on the good, the less we'll have of the other. So sports definitely United thank you for being that proponent. Sports, sports unites our cultures. It unites our races. It's something yes, that's sir. universal. We all love sports. We all love a winner. You know, Dallas yeah. Cowboys are huge. 
in this area because of what they were able to do as champions as a great organization in regards to sports. Absolutely. Um, and and you have a cowboy that donated for the uh, Food and Resource Center, right? Correct? Right. So our Food and Resource sure. Center, and it's unique to the district. We're probably the only campus that has a campus pantry. That I've seen. created by DISD Homeless Education Program with focus on teens. And we Beautiful. also have a new Frito-Lay North America Resource Center that we, nice. just walk, we were blessed to walk in as they partner with our Collegiate Academy as our partner. And when they start talking, well, how can we not only help uh-huh. our 200 Collegiate kids, but how can we affect the other 1,200 kids that y'all have? And yeah. I started talking about our numbers of homelessness. Some of the executives were like, what if we created a resource center? And I, and I and led the idea and kind of cultivated it with those leaders that this is what the purpose of our pantry is. So yeah. It wouldn't be duplicative in our resources and our actions, our pantry serves our transient students. Yeah. Our resource center serves all of our students and their parents. Yeah, the parents is what got me. Frito Lay <laughs> is all wow, the parents. And how does it serve parents as well? Because yeah, yeah, because Frito Lay is like a sponsor or partner with that. Right. So Frito Lay it's North a- America is where you buy your potato chips and all of that. They have a Man. warehouse in Irving and all over this state. And what wow. they said is they are specifically putting 250 warehouse jobs aside for families out of hard hit communities like 75216, wow. 75241. They particularly partner with organizations like Feed the Children and, you know, Southern Dallas Thrives over there with Ashley Duncan. And they particularly partner with them to affect things in 75216 because of the, the data. And as a result of that, I'm like, how can you come in and affect things according to the data? but not deal with the only high school that sits in the heart of 75216. It's just, again, it's using the data, but not making sure it's done with the proper respects to what the community needs. And yeah. Frito-Lay's leadership agreed. Uh, they made a major donation to South Oak Cliff High School. Oh, shout uh, out Frito-Lay, Lay, man. Shout out Frito-Lay North America, Nikki Johnny. So, I'm going to buy I'm gonna buy a bag of chips after this just because of that, man. <laughs> That's what's up. Wow. But the key to that was, we were able to serve students outside of our homeless student with supplies, but we were also able to get their parents jobs. Yeah, that that's, has been, and that's, that's where you biggest, make a real change. That's, that's how you end homelessness. Impact the whole family. By creating financial, economic stability in yeah. families. And it's done. If you get a, you t- you get a homeless parent a, a job, their situation changes. Now they're able to pay rent and insurance that's right. and buy clothes and so we have to get them jobs. It's an economic move, yes, man. Sir. And Frito Lay North America were bold, and they're one of their kind to come into our school and and donate those resources to help directly South Oak Cliff kids, but the entire super block of South Oak Cliff High School. So we we were getting ready to open Shout out to live in block. April, but due to COVID, we had to kind of tone it down. And I didn't know that the CEO is African American. Steve Williams, I believe, is his name. And he's Man. on board, and we're, we're proud of that partnership. It's going to pay huge yeah. dividends to what we're going to do in the future with our community. That's huge, man. And that's I hope I'm hey, answering hey, all hey. your questions, man. Hey, <laughs> man, you, I think I think we did, brother. I, I just also want to shout out uh, Friendship West for helping out with the, those efforts. I, I think part of the Food Pantry was their idea, and they came, the, the volunteer squad, on, on a mission. Shout out Friendship right. West oh, on yeah, a mission, I'm, man. Do you know anything about the great Dr. Freddie, Freddie Haynes, Haynes yes, over at West. He's what I call our community pastor. Yeah, he's um, he's stay in the community and his we people. To, we we used to partner in particularly South Oak Cliff about ten years ago with Friendship West, where our students would go over and do their angel tree every Christmas, and that oh, wow. kind of started the the segue. And they would always do a huge feed the homeless for Thanksgiving at their old building on Keys, and we started working with them then. So when we got the pantry, I thought, hey, maybe <laughs> yeah, I would naturally call them in to assist us with stocking the pantry because running a pantry is not easy. You have no, food, no. you have to check dates, you have to, you know, you have to restock stuff, shelving, you have yeah. to do all that in addition to your job <laughs> daily <laughs> at the school. Yeah, so, like you don't like you don't already do enough. Hey, so, so they and they and they came in with the expertise for sure, man. I know that Friendship West Streamline had a whole process. Friendship going. West has a very aggressive outreach to the community, and particularly the African-American and Latino community, where they give Absolutely. free produce. They do seminars, webinars, 
They have places where you can go up to the church and get education on civics. So that, yeah. they're very unique yeah. about that. And I yeah. thought that if we're going to run a pantry, why don't we bring people in that do, that do this for a living, that understands Absolutely. the narrative, and they come in once a month just to stock, check dates, restock, make hygiene kits like they did. Shout out to Brother Nomo and Keisha Smith <laughs> there at, at OAM. Le- on leading the way. Ministries with Friendship West. And again, this is how you keep your community connected by bringing in grassroots people that are not going to be bought, that understands the narrative, and they get the job done. No yes, excuses. sir. Yes, sir. And that, and we did. We partnered with Education Freedom with them to do a college and career readiness event. It was beautiful. Yep. So it, it, I definitely know Friendship West out here doing the real work, like yourself, my brother, out here doing the real work. So once again, want to thank you for sharing your expertise with us, man, your wisdom, sh- telling us a little bit about your background, but also coming back to be a blessing and, and really you're leading the charge of spearheading this community so that we can have more batis hopefully get built up because they ain't they ain't they don't make them like you but there may be like there may be a little fourth or fifth grader and <laughs> right now the next, see, see, here, here, the next yeah. David Reed on their way up right now <laughs> they're in the high, they're in the elementary school now <laughs> they watch on their way up to take the reins and again use your yes, influence sir. absolutely use your integrity Yes, sir. And, and and use the system. Like I say, this census, since they yeah. expanded it, I think, to August now, and I work with our uh, Like October, Senate October. Senate. We got like Halloween. Getting out to vote, GOTV. Do the census. Make sure yes, sir. you're represented. I think that's the biggest thing that I can Absolutely. leave with our listeners and people that will be tuning into this at a later time. Make sure we're represented. Students, ask your mom or your grandma or your guardian, have you done the census? If yeah. not, do it because that's how we get the resources in the community represented that's how those things bring resources in our community stop talking about what you ain't got yeah hadn't got involved in the process bingo that's the solution to the problem we we always talk about the problem that's that's the unique difference with some of our leaders we're through talking now yeah yeah all the talking now it's time for action it's time for work and we're actively recruiting anybody that has that same passion to come on back to our communities and work hard, Amen. use your influence and your integrity to influence Amen. these children. See, you, see, you, you give me the exclamation point. I was just gonna ask if people, <laughs> if people, if people really want to put in the work and get to work, how can they plug in with you and the SOC community? Or what, what should I do if I'm a community member? I know you're doing the real work. I want to get involved. Where do I go? Who do I contact? How do I do it? I'll tell you what, Mr. Reeves. With so much work out there, I will be, say be very clear. Join, go online to dallasisd.org. Yep. Click Thanks on volunteers lad. if you want yes, to volunteer sir. with a school. Volley go battle. on the 4 Oak Cliff website, the yep, city yep. of Dallas website, <laughs> the county. Go Shot. on any of those, city Education of DeSoto. Freedom. They're always looking for a few good men and women <laughs> to come out and help with these, these efforts that we're trying to start. What we're looking for is our in- innovators, people yep. with great ideas like geek leaks. Yes, sir. <laughs> this young man comes out of Lancaster High School. Yes, sir. And Where he I grew up. Him and his mom come in and they work their behinds off to create something about gaming here in our community. So yeah. Geek and Geeks is, is one of those organizations Absolute. that you can come out and support. Yes, I'm sir. Be and it's going to be in the school. Sure there's a representation from South Oak Cliff <laughs> <laughs> here at Geek Leaks. And, and I believe you. Exists, so you That's why I wanted you to see it. I believe it's going. you're going to make it happen. If anybody's going to do it, you're going to get it done. Hey, I believe it's a, get involved, pick a community, look at the data, no take your influence and your integrity, go into those communities and make a change. You can be the change you want to see in our community. Oh man, he he going he going to drop the mic with Gandhi on us, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one more time, y'all give it up for my powerful brother, none other than Mr. Derek Batty, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you coming you. on the show, brother. And this has been another Mentor Connected episode, another Geek Leeds Esports Masterclass episode. And we thank you for tuning in. And again, <laughs> if you want to plug in with Derek Betty and anything or anybody else in the South Oak Cliff community around here, you know how to get a hold of him. We'll put his information up there. And you volunteer, go online, get on DallasISD.org backslash Go to the SOC, SOC Alumni Bear Cave if you want to get with that organization. Yeah, yeah. Or just South. call South Oak Cliff. I'm always there. I ain't on going nowhere. Media. I'm a lifer. <laughs> Just come to school. <laughs> <laughs> Ask for. Them. 
But again, thank you for coming on the show, brother. Thanks and for having really me, Really appreciate thank all y'all you're doing. For setting this up with COVID-19. It was wonderful how uh, oh, yeah. Danny got those young men. It was children oh, yeah. that set this up, y'all. And it's kids. So we know they yeah, can they, do it. We just got to give the, the resources. They, when they just turned, just turned 20. Just turned oh, 20. Yeah. Straight out of high school coming here and Amen. setting this up, man. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And it's our people helping our people, man. So if you come so. and and you can do a podcast now with the COVID restrictions, yeah, we, proper, we COVID, proper restrictions. We COVID, we COVID ready around here now. We COVID ready. So make sure y'all so, take this thing seriously in our community. A- absolutely. It looks like numbers are going to hit us hard. But social distancing, stay at yeah, home. If you do not have to be out, don't yes, be sir. out. This is an informative thing. That's why I agreed yes, to sir. come Central. out and give information. Go to Parkland's website, Dallas ISD website, the county and the city of Dallas's <laughs> website. Stay up with the information so you are in the know. That way you can teach somebody else how to go. Bingo. That's how they work. Hey, and on that note, we're out. It's been another mentor moment, mentor connected podcast episode, Geekly Esports Masterclass with Derek Petit. Thanks for coming again, brother. Peace, God Texas. Bless day. Love y'all. Later. Oh, that one, that one. The original number <laughs> one high school in all of Dallas. SOC. <laughs> I'm repping all the way. Appreciate that. Coming to you live from Geekly Studios in the Soto.